Welcome to my fifth video. Today I will show you the exact location of Atlantis. All the present theories try to locate Atlantis on the little ball. Antarctica is Atlantis, it's in the Atlantic Ocean, or the latest theory, it is in Spain, and so on. They try to portray it as a big city. But when you put Atlantis on the bigger Earth, it all becomes so simple and obvious. For me, it's yet another puzzle piece falling on its place. For the people who think, what the hell is he talking about, the bigger Earth? You have to watch my previous videos. Links are above. There I state we are living on the bigger Earth. So, let's take a look at Atlantis. The description of Plato. How could we recreate that image? Well, you would have a crater, in a crater, in a crater. But hey, where did I hear that story before? Exactly. Remember in my previous video I made a 3D object in which I simulated light that gave the reflection of Saturn. So let's go back to Saturn on the moon map called Linné. Let's fill the dark shadows with water. One ring, two, three. Let's compare that with Atlantis. Three rings of water, three rings of water. So, the conclusion is Saturn is Atlantis. But now a little bell starts ringing. I'm starting to realize why all the occult societies are obsessed with Saturn. Now, the rest of the story is getting very simple. Let's go back to the moon map. You have two important players here. You have moon crater Linné, with the star name Saturn and the Earth name Atlantis. And you have crater Sulpicius Gallus M, star name Sirius, our biosphere Earth. Thirdly, you have a big plane called Mare Serenitatis, calm sea. I guess it wasn't that calm. So, watch the location of Atlantis and of Biosphere Earth. Atlantis is in the middle of the sea. Biosphere Earth is on the shores of a ridge. Now, let's presume there is a tsunami on the bigger Earth and the whole crater of Atlantis was flooded. That would have been an enormous disaster with earthquakes and their whole biosphere would have been swallowed by the water. Part of the population could escape by boat and managed to save their family and some livestock. Was it Noah or Gilgamesh? One boat, several boats, we don't know, but part of the Atlanteans managed to escape. So Noah started sailing and managed to reach the shore. Here you see a simulation on the moon map. It must have been an enormous trip. I estimate it to be 2 million kilometers. Finally, land. Here you see an aerial view of their landing place, our crater. Finally, they landed their boat on Mount Ararat, a mountain near Crater Earth. Once the water returned to a lower level, the Atlanteans and their family got out of their boat. From there they started walking. 
that would have been 40,000 kilometers. With a family and livestock, that could have taken 40 years. 40 years in the desert? Where did we hear that story before? Look at the position of Crater Earth. It is very close to the shore. On the side of Crater Earth you see an opening that is lower than the rest. Once in a while, when water on the bigger planet is rising, water could leak into our crater. Maybe at a certain moment in time, a huge piece of ice slipped into the crater and caused an enormous destruction, the so-called ice meteorite. That meteorite was responsible for the rising of sea levels and I think it sealed off the gateway to the bigger earth. Earlier people could enter our crater on foot, now they need a boat. Slowly this information of the gateway got lost to the point where we are now. And now at the present time how are you going to explain water levels rising if you don't want to tell the people about the bigger earth? Well, you invent climate change and you tell people the ice of Antarctica is melting because of fossil fuels. No, I think it's the water of Mare Serenitatis that is leaking into our crater. So, what's next? The Atlanteans enter the promised land and discover the Garden of Eden. It must have been a beautiful world. There must have been hominid races in the biosphere. I think that because of their higher technology they must have been seen as the gods. Maybe some of the gods had difficulty breathing because of the different mixture of oxygen and needed some kind of respirator. Were they seen as bird gods because of that apparatus? Another question would be, were there giants? Of course, this is blasphemy for mainstream science. Was Homo, sap excuse me. was Homo sapiens around? I don't know. I'll make another improvisation here. It's purely speculative. Don't take it for granted. Here I go. The gods of Atlantis forbid their people to have sex with the hominids. But a few fallen angels disobeyed and the crossbreed of Atlanteans and hominids was born, Homo sapiens. Because of that, Adam and Eve were cast out of paradise, the Garden of Eden. They had to leave greater earth. So I would guess Adam was an Atlantean and Eve a hominid. So if you are looking for the missing link in the evolutionary story, you won't find it. Bye bye Darwin. This is blasphemy. So the gods started rebuilding their world and built the megalithic structures. Maybe with some advanced technology because we still don't understand how they cut those gigantic stones. This technology might have been put in a special protected box. Later, when the gods died out, or they left again, there was a fight over the left behind technology of the gods, with the whole story about the Ark of the Covenant. This story, of course, is so absurd and out of the blue, that the Freemasons decided to build a replica. Look at the menorah in front of the Ark. Another reminder of the rings of Atlantis. 
the Atlanteans probably had some advanced knowledge. I suspect they had explored and mapped out the complete bigger Earth. I deduce that from the several star maps that were built in our crater, like the Golan Heights, Stonehenge, the pyramids and so many more. Now I will show you some knowledge hidden in the monuments. Ok, let's zoom in on Stonehenge, what is left of it. Ok, let's move to the right and there you see in the soil, I don't know if anyone has seen this before, you can see clearly the sign of Orion. Move to the right, you see a bull's head, Taurus. Move to the right and there you see the seven stars of Pleiades. Let's zoom out, move to the left and then there you see Saturn aka Atlantis. Well, if you wonder why those trees are still standing there, I think underneath you would find the rings of Atlantis. So, let's summarize. If you go from right to left, you have first the Pleiades, next you have Taurus, and then you have Orion. So, what would Stonehenge be then? Let's take the star map. On the right you see Pleiades, next Taurus, Orion, so on the left you have Sirius. That means that Stonehenge is Sirius. Crater Earth. So if that is true, let's compare Stonehenge with Sulpicius Gallus M and with a photograph of Sirius. Sadly, there is not much left of Stonehenge, but luckily there's still an old drawing. Let's take a look at it. Well, I would say that's bingo. Let's compare. Here you see the circle in the center, the photograph, the stones and Stonehenge. Then you see the two notches on the photograph of Sirius and the two circles on Stonehenge. And now the most important, the gateway on Sulpicius Gallus M photograph of Sirius and here on Stonehenge you see the gateway. This is the information our ancestors have put into the monuments. Now you understand why they are destroying these buildings. Exactly on the spot of the gateway they have built a road. Ok, let's have another example of the star map. I found a very strange coincidence when I compared Mars with Silbury Hill. Ok, let's zoom in. Watch the exact same proportion. Let's flip it. One is a crater, the other is a mountain. And look at the black snake-like line at the bottom of the building. Well, that looks like the same to me. And again, the same tactics. Let's put a road on the monument. I think our ancestors have been building miniatures of certain places of the bigger earth. Ok, let's go to Egypt now, to the pyramids. Everybody probably knows the link between the three Orion stars and the pyramids. But did you know that people think that the Sphinx might not be a lion, but a dog? Anubis? Ok, let's look at the star constellations. You have Orion and next to it you have Canis Meyer, the big dog. So if you look at the star constellation, you see that Sirius is at the chest of the dog. 
Now let's assume that the Sphinx is a dog, then there must be something on the chest of the Sphinx. Here you see there is an opening on the head of the Sphinx. And supposedly a guy named George A. Reisner discovered empty rooms in the Sphinx. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. And it wouldn't surprise me either if they were hiding this from us. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Conclusion, Atlantis is Saturn. And that is the reason all the occult science has a connection with Saturn. I would like to end with the words of thought from the Emerald Tablet. See you next time.